Kirk, you've been all hyped about the last dance. And um, that means you've been saying a whole lot, which means it's time for Man Listen. Man Listen. Hey, listen. 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 Listen up. Listen. Hey, listen. Man Listen. Okay, Burke, we saw your tweets, uh, and those tweets got tens and thousands of likes. I didn't notice, right, until I watched the episodes the other, uh, last Sunday that, you know, I heard and I watched the highlights of Jordan having 63 and 49 points, but I didn't know that he lost those games. So when I was watching the documentary, I was like, oh, so everyone was bragging about these 63 points in this 49-point game that he had but nobody mentioned that he lost and he got swept to the Boston Celtics. Now, I know the Celtics was the best team in the league, and you're talking about arguably the top five greatest team ever. But at the end of the day, all I was saying was, was that where is this same energy when we talk about LeBron James? When we talk about LeBron James, when he goes to the finals and average a triple-double on teams and everyone says, oh, that don't mean nothing, or, the first game against Go game one against Golden State with KD, and he goes for 51 8 8. And it's just like, oh, he still didn't beat him. And it's like, where's the same energy? And then, by the way, the, the other tweet that I put out, because LeBron at, at the age of 22, LeBron James carried the team without, you know, a certified Robin with a, a Daniel Gibson a Damon Jones, a Drew Gooden. He took that team to the finals. So I was just comparing Michael Jordan at the age of 22 and LeBron James at the age of 22. That's all I did. I never said who was the GOAT or who was the greatest of all time. I just sparked up a conversation. Yeah, you know, per, uh, there's parts of me that agree with you and there's parts that don't agree. I'm going to tell you like this. Uh, from the standpoint <laughs> of... Um, when this documentary was coming out, a lot of people, particularly older players and stuff, they're saying, all right, now you're going to see how different it was back then. It was real and it was tough. It's not like y'all got it today and all that stuff. We heard all that stuff. And what's funny is you watch those first two episodes and all it did was solidify that things ain't changing the NBA. A lot of this stuff is the same. So, for instance, people get on LeBron's case about having friends who play for other teams. Jordan and them didn't have friends. It was enemies at all times. And then we see him golfing with Danny Ainge in the middle of the playoffs. Right. Not even, not even like his homeboy he went to college with, like Kenny Smith or James Worthy. Danny Ainge. He, right. There's no way you could have told me him and Danny Ainge go way back, right? So clearly, friendships across enemy lines is not a new thing in the NBA. And, and Jordan did it just like LeBron does it, right? So I'm with you there. I'm with you on if LeBron had scored 49 and 63, he would be destroyed, right? And, and lost those games. He would be destroyed, but I'm here to tell you, Perk, they were killing Jordan back then. Now they're not. You're right. Now the the, the results of those games are forgotten. Right. But at the time, they were killing him. They would say, oh, he's selfish. All he want to do is get his. He don't pass the ball. He's not a winner. He's not like Magic and Larry. That's right. what they were saying at the time. And I, I told this to the guys on the production call the other day. I got in my bookmarks a YouTube video from the NBA on NBC intro where Marv Albert talking about uh, OJ Simpson rushed for 7 million yards, but he never went to a Super Bowl. Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub, never went to the World Series. Bob Lanier, a 15-year career, like right up there with uh, Kareem and all the other great bigs of the league, never won a championship. And Michael Jordan. Like, and they're talking about Jordan like he a loser, man. Like it, we forget now because he erased all those memories with win after win after win once he got to the finals. But the reality is up until he made his first NBA finals, the criticism about him was just as loud as what you think the criticism would be about LeBron if he had done it, well. I mean, I, and I look, I agree with you a hundred percent except on one point. It's no way he was getting criticized like if Le yeah. LeBron James yeah. got criticized because- uh -huh. Because his expect, but his expectations wasn't on the same level. Like that, that was the whole thing. That was one of the concepts that I got from watching it. Because when 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 Larry Bird spoke on Michael Jordan, and they spoke when after he dropped sixty three and forty nine, they was like, "Where did this come from?" So in their eyes, they wasn't expected it. So when he came in. And but all of a sudden, that was his second year in the league. Bird, Bird. I understand, and then it's social media. 
it just it changes the game as far as what you're talking about okay. but it was you will see um the the next two episodes airing on sunday uh are going are about jordan going after his first title and having to get through the bad boy piston so that conversation will will, will come up Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.